Feminism as an ideology is quite naturally focused on women. It's focused on women's advancement, on women's rights, on building women up as much as humanly possible. So it makes sense that feminism would propose ideas that would make women's lives as a whole better and happier, right? Or, if nothing else, that those who promote feminist ideas would live by them wholesale and believe that they are ideas as a whole that will make women happier. Well, maybe not always. Let's talk a little about some of the reasons why on today's episode of Men's Mental Health. Hello once again from the Prim Reaper. When I think about common feminist beliefs and ideals, there are a couple of things that come to mind right away. Well, let's be real, there are certain things that come to my mind about the subject, but let's argue in good faith here. I'm trying to talk about things that feminists might believe that are self-affirming, positive beliefs that they would want to share with other women. In this regard, the sorts of things I envision are about women wanting to be viewed with equal respect to men, women wanting to have their voices heard, about women wanting to feel powerful and comfortable in their own skin, without feeling like they need to live up to a certain societal standard to have any value. Lacking any context, these are not objectionable things to want by any stretch of the imagination. Now, you might be wondering so far, what does all this have to do with men's mental health? Well, now we can start moving into some of that context that I was mentioning before, which is that underlying belief that there is something preventing them from achieving all of these positive goals. This something is usually presented as the ubiquitous patriarchy. Now, while many feminists are careful to explain that they are not attacking men as a group when they attack the patriarchy, not all feminists have the same restraint. Yet, even amongst these women, they may talk the talk, but not always walk the walk. Think about statements like, women need men like fish need a bicycle. For some feminists, they may absolutely live their lives by this mantra and live it loudly and proudly. But on the other hand, I wonder if there aren't a lot of people who talk about the many patriarchal evils of marriage and the extent to which children and family prevent women from reaching their one true goal of climbing the corporate ladder, who are themselves happily married to men and who might even have children of their own. <gasps> I, for one, personally know far more people who call themselves feminist who are married or at least in a domestic partnership with a man than those who are proudly single or who bat for the other team. Most of these male-partnered feminists are quite content with their spouses or at least never publicly air their dirty laundry. Yet, many of these women will, without a hint of irony, share images blaming men for all the evils in the world and making demands that men need to be better or that boys need to be held responsible. There's a disconnect that I just can't wrap my head around. It's like someone who proclaims themselves a proud vegan while trying to justify why the chickens they raise for slaughter represent a totally different and acceptable situation than all other meats. And for the men in these kinds of relationships, I have to really sit and wonder about what this could do to their mental health in both the short and the long term. In some sense, it might depend on the man experiencing it. A man who has accepted feminism into his heart as his lord and savior may simply view himself as exempt from her criticisms, or better yet, that he has done enough to sufficiently repent for the crime of simply existing while male. Of course, even such a man may still regularly feel the need to have to apologize on behalf of his fellow men, and may even experience regular little twinges of cognitive dissonance every time his spouse points out yet another example of male failings. But what about the men who do not consider themselves feminist? Some of them may simply say their yes dears in order to keep their spouses happy whenever the subject comes up. They may still be able to divorce <laughs> themselves from the idea that, yes, when their wife says that men need to step up and be better, 
they do indeed fall into the category of men. However, for some, other reactions may begin to spring up. Some men may start to fall into a depression and question their self-worth brought on by the many multitudes of examples of male failings their partner shares on social media. He may feel like he has to do more and more to keep her happy or risk losing her. Other men may begin to feel embittered by all the negative comments about men, or the tone-deaf emotional labor or mental load articles she shares, as if he doesn't have a running list of concerns going through his mind on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Some men may feel inclined to ask, if not outright challenge her, if she feels the same way about him as she feels about the ubiquitous men category she so readily criticizes. Realistically, I think this kind of behavior should be challenged as readily as any other kind of generalizing behavior ought to be. After all, most of us don't think twice about saying that someone who makes a broad sweeping statement about black people or women or any other group of individuals is in the wrong. Unfortunately, though, as far as men are concerned, the practice of broadly criticizing and grouping together men is not only not shamed, but it is often widely and publicly encouraged. And I think we are seeing more and more of what this kind of behavior is doing to men. A lot of people act like men are impervious to negative generalizations, or brush off any concerns anyone has with claims of, if you don't engage in this behavior, then you have nothing to worry about. But we are seeing more and more examples of men experiencing depression, self-doubt, and even guilt for being born male. I don't know about you, but when I think about the group of people most likely to experience suicidal ideation and how we might improve outcomes for them, my first thought is not continue to berate them for something they had no control over. But maybe that's just me. But let's dial it back a little bit here. You might think that it would be a little bit odd that women who want to spend a large portion of their time criticizing men would have no problem settling down with one. I know I have a difficult time reconciling the idea of wanting to share a life with someone belonging to a group I assign all the world's woes to. You'd think that would be a recipe for disaster. Maybe there's an equal amount of cognitive dissonance going in the other direction. I got lucky. I found one of the good ones. The good ones are so rare that I couldn't possibly advocate to other women to risk trying to find one themselves. Even though this is the happiest I've ever been in a relationship, I don't think any other women will be lucky enough to find the same. Or, ultimately, it could also just boil down to a complete lack of awareness. After all, when you're motivated primarily by having a dragon to take down, or in this case, a patriarchy, you don't need to take the time or mental effort to trouble yourself with trifles like the fact that your partner or any other male family members might fall into that category as well. Either way, I have found that this is frequently an area of not practicing what one preaches amongst these feminists, and hey, to be honest, I think that's a good thing. Think about it. They're preaching hateful, generalizing nonsense, and yet they are overcoming that rhetoric to form a satisfying relationship with someone. But, unfortunately, that still leaves us with the whole preaching hateful, generalizing nonsense part, doesn't it? And unfortunately, even if the people who spread these messages haven't necessarily bought into their own brand of Kool-Aid, they can convert the vulnerable, or the uncritical thinkers, into believers of what is being said. And these believers can then go on to perpetuate the same kind of hateful messages against men, sowing more depression and self-doubt, more division and distrust between the sexes. Brian shared an article that highlighted one significant culprit in exactly this pattern of behavior, and that's the article we're going to be eviscerating on today's episode of Men's Mental Health. 